On today's show, we're going across the border into Wisconsin to go fishing for muskies the hard way. Yeah. Yep, Woo. with a fly rod. We just have a few simple ingredients. And what's cooking wild in the kitchen? Laura Shera is gearing up for the waterfowl season, cooking wild duck. All right. <laughs> and our Minnesota Bound Classic this week takes us to the lakes of Chisago, Minnesota. Great fall scenery, and even better, fall fishing. Oh, this might be a good fish. Those stories and more, next. Oh, yeah. Nice fat one. Oh, boy. Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi everybody, Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know the most difficult fish to catch in all freshwater is considered the muskie. So why would you try to go after the muskie with a disadvantage, say using a fly rod and a fly? Good question. Bill Shirk has the answer. Classic. Just classic. Cold, gray, bone-chilling weather. The perfect morning to swig another cup of joe. At the Elkhorn's front table, Team TFO ties up another dream. I don't know, that's pretty good hair day. You like that hair day? That's gonna catch a fish. Giant fishing flies brainstormed to trick the biggest of Wisconsin game fish. You got a sling of chicken. Honey? <laughs> All over Northwest Wisconsin, Teams gear up for two cold days on the water. You know, this is kind of a standard fall size musky fly. We're up here fishing the uh, World Championships of uh, musky fly fishing. Yep, he said it a world championship of this. Fly rods for muskies. It's the new cool. On this October weekend, 50 anglers from 13 different states will try and hook muskies. Fish tough enough to trick on conventional fishing gear, much less a fly and rod. What do you want to start with today, John? Breck Folks and John Coolidge drove down from Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We're fishing! <laughs> <laughs> the competition is not yet. That's a good luck on you right there. Fishing guide Blaine Chocolate drove 1,100 miles to compete. He needed teammates. He was coming up here to do it and called and asked us to come fish the tournament with him. And people in Texas aren't bright, so here we are. <laughs> That's Texan Jim Shulin, a southern boy suddenly bundled up and here to fish muskies for one reason. Uh, I think the challenge, they don't eat anything. <laughs> Over the next two days, a world title is on the line. Okay, honestly, this is a niche event, a tournament for fly rod diehards, folks who live to cast the art of fly, rod, and line. There's a f select few of us that decide to try to take on this fish of 10,000 casts using uh, flies. Teams fish area lakes and rivers near Hayward. If an angler gets lucky and catches a muskie, they measure, they photograph, and then release the fish. Here you gotta make the fly look like a fish, otherwise it's not happening. John Coolidge knows the muskie fishing game. The part I love the best is when you do a cast like that and the water just boils out there. He's there. He guides when he's not fishing. There's just something about chasing muskies. It's hard, hard work, but when it does connect, it's really awesome because the take is so ferocious that you just can't find that in any other game fish. And here's the thing about all these musky geeks. There's a fish, there's a fish, there's a fish. They get all hyped up about the follows, even if the fish does not eat. He dropped off. It's still a win. Before this tournament ends, someone, somewhere, will catch a fish or two or three. 
It's the lure of muskies on the fly and a world championship to boot. With the world championship on the line, will the muskies finally start to bite? Stay tuned. <laughs> Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota's select GMC dealers. Connecticut. Rapala Ice Force. L.L. Bean and by Grand Rapids Tourism. Time now to return to the big musky bash in Hayward, Wisconsin. Keep those fly rods a whipping. Dreams of really big fish make people sort of funny. Oh, that was good. There you go, got that on camera. <laughs> With the world championship on the line, anglers gear up for the last day of fishing. This is the world championship of muskie fishing, a two-day event in Hayward, Wisconsin. Fly rods only. Another beautiful day in northern Wisconsin. Typical October. Team TFO, a Virginia fishing guide and two buddies from Texas, casting away at a tough task of trying to get a muskie to bite. Anglers call muskies the fish of 10,000 casts on cast 7,642 or something like that. Nothing happens. And then you cast again. Legendary is that moment when something hits the line. The lure of muskies, hours upon hours of casting for that magic couple minutes in time. And catching on a fly rod, there's just something innately special about the act, an act understood by fellow angler Jason. Last four or five years, I've been holding a fly rod more than a spinning rod, but it's just another way to fish, really. Although when throwing a giant 10-inch fly 60 feet through the air. Yikes. Stuff happens. <laughs> That's real effective. <laughs> hey, you have done that a lot. <laughs> well, I think, you know, Sawyer County alone's got close to 170 miles of river that have infestations of muskie, and that's just one county. You know, we got a lot of water up here to play around in. Hey, we got one. Here we go. Here we go. In the net. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Thank goodness. Tell you what, there's so much adrenaline when you hook one of those things. All of a sudden, you know, you cast all day and all of a sudden there's something pulling back. And then, to have fish in hand, to celebrate, to document, and remember, priceless. And then maybe, just maybe, the best part of all. Good job, boys. <laughs> now, we actually, in Virginia, to keep my clients, do, you know, focused on stuff, we, we do a chant. Yama, 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 yama. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, it brings a fish every time. OK, who can argue that? Yama, yama, yama. There we got one. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Yeah. Whoa, it works. And it's a green one. It's a green one. Healthy, healthy fish. Yeah! Woo! Woo! Yeah, days like this where you get to see this many fish are pretty special. So goes a world championship. By nightfall, boats are back on their bunks. The beer flows, and it's kind of funny. Even with cameras around and champions crowned, no one really seems to notice. Maybe the tournament isn't the point. It is these people in this place at 
this moment that counts. It is the lure of muskies on the fly. We're just gonna take that out. And we're just gonna kinda shrink. Up next, Laura Shera takes on a recipe that's sure to be better than her dad's. Yeah, she's cooking wild duck. This beautiful duck meat. Closed captioning is brought to you by Starkey Hearing Technologies. Hello, I'm Rob Driesline, Managing Editor of the Outdoor News Publications. Minnesota's pheasant hunting season opened earlier this month, and biologists across the rooster belt are predicting a slightly better season than a year ago. The results of Minnesota's August roadside survey showed pheasant counts were higher this year than in 2013, though still down from the 10-year and long-term averages. Milder winter weather across the region's pheasant range, plus some decent nesting conditions this spring, helped the uptick in bird numbers this past year. Minnesota hunters could take more than 220,000 roosters this fall, compared to about 170,000 last year. Keep in mind, however, that the 2013 harvest was the lowest since 1986. Across Minnesota's western border, similar surveys in South Dakota showed an increase of 76% from a year ago, and in Iowa, numbers jumped 151% from last summer. Long term, the prognosis for pheasant hunting looks a little unclear, and sportsmen and politicians across the region want that to change. You might recall my report last winter about the South Dakota Pheasant Summit, which produced that state's Pheasant Habitat Work Group. The 13-member task force issued a final report in September, which got a thumbs up from conservation groups like St. Paul-based Pheasants Forever. Now, a couple weeks later, Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton announced he wants Minnesota to host its own pheasant rendezvous sometime in December. Now, Outdoor News checked with Jeff Johnson, the Republican candidate for governor, and he said if elected, he too would hold a pheasant summit. So however you vote on November 4th, looks like Minnesota is going to be having an in-depth discussion on ring-necked pheasants and their grassland habitat later this year. For regular updates on how the 2014 pheasant seasons and the pheasant summit unfold, read the print version of Outdoor News or check us out online at OutdoorNews.com. I'm Rob Jerisline. Time now to go wild in the kitchen with Laura Shera. The menu today has wild duck on it. I can't tell you what a lousy wild duck chef I am. Hopefully Laura has a better taste. Today we're getting wild in the kitchen with Chef Jim from Fire Lake Grill House and Cocktail Bar and we are making one of my favorites which is pizza. Pizza. I love it and it's wild duck pizza. Wild duck pizza, you got it. Oh my goodness, so this would be fun for the family to create together and it seems like we just have a few simple ingredients. It is, it's very easy to put together but it's got a lot of flavor. All right, so what's the first step? We're gonna spread a, a thin layer of some cipollini cream. Now what is in cipollini cream? Uh, Easiest way for me to explain it, very similar to like an Alfredo sauce. Okay. It's made with cipollini onions. It gives it a little extra flavor, a little sweetness. So yeah, just take a spoon or ladle, nice thin layer across this. Next, we've got our duck. Notice that the skin is on. A lot of hunters yes, uh, they, don't like to take the time. They don't, and hunters, we should be listening here. You guys should take the time to leave the skin on because... Well, whenever possible, I understand. Uh, but it's going to keep a lot of that natural moisture in. So it's, it's almost like an insulation, kind of a self-basting process during, right. the, during the roast. And the flavor's in the fat. That is. That is true. As soon as it's cool enough to handle, we're just going to take that out. And we're just going to kind of shred it right over the top of the pizza. Here, I can help you with that. You want to do that for sure, me, Sure, I'll do this chunk. Look at this beautiful duck meat. And then the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to take a nice crisp apple. Um, Granny Smith's work good or any tart variety that you have. Nice baking apple that will stay crisp. Okay, how am I doing here? Doing good. great. All right, there we go. All right, so next go the apples. Then we also have some fresh figs. Okay. Sprinkle those on for me. That's. And then we got a couple different types of cheese. We got uh, some blue cheese crumbles. Kind of sprinkle those across the top. Sure. And then we also have some Parmesan, if you'd like to sprinkle that over the top. That. What a fun way to get kids involved, too, with cooking wild game and Definitely. with pizza. Kids love to make pizzas, That's and right. even more, they love to eat pizzas. That's so. true. <laughs> All right, now we're ready to go in the oven. Perfect. So how long does our pizza need to stay in the oven? 
Eight to ten minutes, 450 degrees, golden brown and bubbly. Golden brown and bubbly. I think it's been about eight to ten minutes, don't That's you think? A, I think it's golden brown and bubbly. Okay. Let's go check it out. <laughs> So there you have it, it's wild duck pizza today, and if you don't have any wild duck in your freezer, you can get this pizza right here at Fire Lake this fall. And again, it's so easy to do, yet wildly delicious. Is that hot? <laughs> Very good. Our classic takes us back to Chisago Lakes where one can catch some fall scenery and some great bass. Next. I love them. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Radco Truck Accessories. The Minnesota Horse and Hunt Club. And by Eggstar Financial Services. Our Minnesota Bound Classic this week reminds us all that it's not too late to go casting for bass at this time of year. So we headed up to Chisago Lakes area and found some action. Autumn means change on the water. Gulls gather, geese are resting. Somehow I think I should be sitting in a goose blind here instead of a bass boat. It's chilly out here. It can't be more than 40, 45 degrees. When autumn comes for bass anglers like Chris Lidke, it's both a beginning and an end. Fall fishing to me means peace and quiet. Peace and quiet and a lot of very willing fish. A chill wind blows, leaves begin to fall, but the big game on Chisago isn't football, it's big bass. Oh, this might be a good fish. Uh-oh. What? This is a big one. Ooh, I think it this is. is a real big one. Yeah, this is a big fish. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh, yeah. A nice fat one. Oh, boy. That is. That is a pig. That is a nice Chisago Lake large mud. Look at the gut on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, we caught one. He was up shallow. This particular lake um, is, is kind of special because it's a phenomenal bass fishery because it's got a restriction on the lake all bass have to be immediately released. There is, you can't keep one out of this lake. Thanks, buddy. All of this fishing fun, a 30 minute drive from downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's a cool thing, isn't it? Yeah, I love it up here. A little more rock. And Frankie Desenka loves it here too, here on the St. Croix. Frankie is the Frankie of Frankie's live bait, a Chisago icon. This is the nicest time of the year, you know, where the water temperature is just getting right, the trees are perfect. You know, it's, it's the end of the summer and the beginning of, I believe, 40 days of the best, best part of the year. And for Frankie, it's only a jet ride away. Oh, they're excellent for rivers. It's a must for the rivers. For the Minnesota rivers, it is a must. What Frankie didn't say is the jet boat carries him to the river's smallmouth bass a fish of the rocks guarded by eagles. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Ron struck gold, a smallmouth bass. All right. Ha ha. This is what the river's famous for. <laughs> On this day, the yeah. valley of the St. Croix was beginning to fill with gold. Gold leaves, gold fish. <laughs> I love them. There's not a better fish than the smallmouth. You should never be able to kill one. And it's the most beautiful fish there is. I believe it is. Now there's a new definition of autumn splendor, catching golden bass amid golden leaves. <laughs> Fishing in the fall, hard to believe that in a few weeks or months, perhaps, it'll all be frozen over. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Sharon, and as always, the star of the show, are you listening to me, is Raven. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.
For more information on these stories and more, catch us on the web at mnbound.com.